and welcome back. Okay, now we're going to cover the uh, SD card player, which plays uh, the um, audio, video, and um, pictures off of this SD card. And um, that supports up to 8 gigabytes. This card here is mainly for the GPS only. It only supports up to 2 gigabytes. So we're going to go back here. This section is only for this card. So we'll come back to that in a moment. Now we're going to go to the SD mode, which is basically the same for iPod and USB. Now this system remembers where you last left off and it resumes, whether you leave the mode or restart the car or any other reason that it may have closed and reopened, but it will remember and go back to where it left off. Now we can select both directories on the left hand side or folders for those of you more familiar with that name and songs on the right hand side. Now the file names are shortened to seven characters with a tilde one at the end which is a convention for non-long file names. I believe it's due to space constraints however along the top it will show you the artist name and the song name scrolling uh, from the ID3 tag within the MP3 files. And you can just select a directory by tapping. And then you can select a song by tapping as well. If you want to scroll down, there's these down arrows along the bottom here to scroll. I don't believe you can scroll with that, but you can scroll by turning the knob here. Or using the arrows on the, um, on the steering wheel. The steering wheel controls are kind of upside down. It's more like a list view where the list is moving up. So when you press down, the little bar moves up. When you press up, the bar moves down. It's not a big deal, you get used to it after a little while, but it may seem strange for some people the first time you use it. Now along the bottom here we've got an option here, this is for music, this is for pictures, and this is for video. Now I don't think I have any pictures on this card. Sometimes what you have to do is hit the corner here to get it into touching mode. Sometimes a little bit finicky. Yeah, it's just not happy because I don't have any pictures on this card, that's why it won't go into picture mode. Um, now there's, um, this is not actually a video, so I'm going to go to my video section. I've got a copy of Ice Age here as a standard uh, DivX AVI file. So I'm going to tap it to open it up. And we're going to get an initializing screen here. And I've just unmuted it so that we've got some video. And it's beginning to play. And DivX doesn't always zoom full screen, but you can use the zoom button on the remote here. I'm not sure where it is. I rarely use the remote personally, so... Here's the zoom button, so I'm going to press zoom, and as you see it gets bigger. Zoom 3 gets it even closer. Zoom 4 is even further. And you can zoom the opposite direction. <laughs> I just prefer leaving it as letterboxed and leaving it as is. And we can um, fast forward if we hold down the fast forward button. We can now get it into 2 times speed, 4 times speed, 8 times speed. 20 times speed. We're back to play. Now we hit stop because we're done with that. Put it back into music mode. Now, when you leave or when you switch between video, audio, and picture, it will start back at the beginning again. And, um,. Uh, like I said, I don't have any pictures on here, so I can't show you the picture viewer, but it's pretty straightforward. You it's the same interface, you select the picture you want, and it shows up on the display. So I'm, You can use your imagination. Um, so we'll go back to the main menu again. Now there's an aux input. Now I have RCA jacks in my glove box, but I don't have any um, anything to plug into them right now. 
So I can't really show you anything particularly interesting, but if it had something plugged in, we'd get uh, video on the screen here and audio would be coming through the car speakers just like anything else. Now um, the rear camera, I'm go back, just put it into SD player for the moment. I'm going to show you the automatic switching into rear mode by putting the car into reverse. So, here we are listening to music, car in reverse. And now we've got the uh, back of my garage door. The car back into park or drive, whatever you choose. And it goes back into standard mode. Now while the car is in actual reverse mode, you cannot control the system. It, uh, you can't turn down the volume or mute it or anything. So just make sure you've done that before you put your car in reverse if you have the wire connected. If you go into reverse mode, manually by clicking the rear button you have um, you have control over um, you have control over your audio system while in this mode and that pretty much covers the um, reverse camera and in my case it's not um, it's only on when my lights are on or my car is in reverse so it um, isn't always on. And uh, now we'll go into the setup section. So let's go back to the main menu. Fast forward here up to the setup section. Now, audio setup. Um, this has a loud mode, as I'll demonstrate. It doesn't really sound that great, but it does, uh, does make it louder. Um, it's got pop, classic, rock, jazz, and flat equalizers, and it does go back to the main menu if you leave it for too long, so I'm going to keep on poking at it. Um, the bass section lets you choose uh, to turn up and down the bass. I'll demonstrate here. This is minus 7 bass. This is plus 7 bass. Treble does the same thing. You can turn it all the way off or all the way on. Sound field allows you to adjust where the balance is, whether in the front, back, left, or right of the car. <laughs> and the system setup. Brake detect I don't think does anything on this particular unit. I think that may be to um, stop you from using it while you're driving, but there's no brake wire on this unit, so it doesn't matter. The clock button here will turn off or on the clock in the top corner like I was talking about. RDS turns off and on the radio data system, which um, shows up with the information as I talked about in the first review. And beep will turn on the beep every time you touch the screen. As you can see here, now it's going to beep every time I touch, which gets extremely irritating extremely fast. So I'm going to turn that off, and I don't know what power and value does. Now radio area will let you select whether Russia, USA 1, USA 2, or Europe. This system should work anywhere in the world for radio. Um, TV type is, um, if you have a TV tuner, you can select it here. Um, the volume limited allows you to um, limit the volume when the unit power is on, so you don't get blown away. Um, audio gain allows you to set the, the settings for disc, TV, radio, aux, CD changer, Bluetooth, Navi, and iPod, so that... Um, this, if the various systems have different volumes by default, then they will not override each other or be too loud when you switch between them. Uh, the other settings are not used. It's only for changing between different cars. Um, NaviPath lets you select where your navigation software actually is on this card. Uh, time lets you set your current time. Um, this is only for the system here when it starts up um, the first time because after you go into the GPS it will automatically get the current time from the satellites and calibration and update are not used on this system well you can use calibration the first time to make sure that the uh, touch points are in the right place but um, it's not something you generally use now CD changer does not do anything the mp3 player mp4 player image viewer and reader are all uh, for this card which is limited to 2 gigs and has to have your navi stuff on it as well so it's kind of useless. 
<coughs> but you can select files from the storage card to um, play back video or audio if you really want to. It's not really that useful. Uh, most people stick to the SD, USB, iPod, or the disc itself. And I think that pretty much covers everything this unit does, uh, other than the GPS, which I will need a whole review for uh, itself. So if you want to join me in my third part, then we will go into that. Thanks a lot.